Yo. Yo, yo, what's up? What's up? They can't even hear me. Can they? Yeah, they can hear me. But I'm low. Say something. <clears throat> they can hear you good. Let me let me mute. Yo, 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 yo. Yo. Oh, I think that's too loud. Say something, Ethels. What's up? Hell yeah. <laughs> that's loud as hell. Whole C22, we're going live in like 33 seconds. So bear with us. we just trying to let the YouTube cats come in here. Yo, 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 yo. Okay, that's good. We got to follow or something. I, I, I can't see it. Fourteen seconds. Y'all don't know the problems we go through trying to trying to do this shit for y'all on Twitter. <laughs> Twitter. <laughs> okay, we'll be with y'all in a second. Welcome to the New Rugged Order Podcast, exclusively on the Hard Knock Digital Culture Channel. Now give it up to your host people, MM2K. What's up peoples? Uh oh, it's running again. We can't have it run again. What's up peoples? It's your boy MM2K back again. I know I'm loud as hell. I'm going to fix this, but while I'm fixing how loud I am, uh, we got the homeboy Neethals in the house. What is up, everybody? What's up, Neethals? How you feeling, Neethals? 
Hey, right, man, woke up early. Can't get, wait to get into this show. We got a lot to talk about. It's going to be a good one. Let me know in the chat. I'm a, let's let this run at this volume for a little bit. Uh, we got Devin, got the box in the house. Uh, he said, why well, won't it let you sub? Uh-oh. What the hell's up with that? I don't know why I won't let you sub, brother. Crazy. You got you ain't got warrants, uh, Devin D. <laughs> it should let you sub. <laughs> sub. All right. Um, with that being said, uh, let viewers jump right in. Oh man, I ain't trying to do all this stuff, all this crazy stuff with Twitch, man. I got we got several topics that I wanted to get into in a short amount of time, so we're gonna speed run this. But here's the thing, y'all. Here's the thing, man. It takes a lot of it takes a lot of dough. A lot of cheese to do this, and I don't be doing the e begging. You know, I don't live off of this because I don't. If I did, I'd be eating stream beans out of out of uh, old motor oil cans. But with that being said, I'm doing testing. We're testing cloud stuff. We're validating stuff because people ain't ain't out here doing the truth. If y'all can do us a huge favor, there's a free messaging app that I'm going to drop the links to. Hit us up there. In addition to that, for the live phone calls, I want to I want to react with y'all. But you know what I'm saying we 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 in order to keep all this stuff going because none of this stuff is free, we got to get some support. So if I can get some hits in the free messaging app, if I can get a couple of you know um, a bits or whatever, even get a free sub, we gonna open up the phone calls. You know what I mean? I I, I hate to put I, I hate to make that a standard, but again, you know, show us a little bit of love for all the stuff that we're putting forward because we're trying to bring y'all the truth. Again, we're not trying to nickel and dime anybody we're not trying to make a living off of this this is a passion of ours as we know it is yours but at the same time you know skype ain't open the lines for free stream labs ain't doing what they doing for free. you know what i'm saying so if, if, if we can get a little bit i appreciate it and then that'll help us open some things up i'm um, in the interim why is my what the hell i got going on back here hold on one second let me check out something now okay there we go no that's not what i wanted to do and then the Discord, that's the wrong Discord. Let me see something. Oops, I'm all over the place. All right, so let's. While I'm all over the place, can we let, let's let's tackle that first topic, uh, Nethos. Well, before I get into that, if you can let everybody know what your gaming week has been, you know what I'm saying. While I fix these issues, and then we're gonna jump right into these topics. Gaming week? You mean Halo Reach week? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you might as well hold that. I mean, is that all you've been playing, bro? You you've been you've been down. Um, I play you know a little bit of Call of Duty, okay. and uh, you know what? I actually went back because I was playing Detroit Become Human. I was like, you know, let me try this Batman game, the Telltale ones. Uh -huh. It's it's kind of fun, a little bit more action orientated. That's what I appreciate about it. Uh oh. But uh, you know that that's more or less it. Oh, okay. So, uh, let me see. Oh, okay, now I see what the issue is. We're going to do something like this. Boom. What the hell? Hold on. I should have. I'm sorry, y'all. We really, we really having some issues here. Okay, there we go. Now it looks normal. Golly. All right. I ain't done this in a while. It's my fault. So I'm, I'm messing up all over the place. Maybe that's why. Maybe that's why y'all won't uh, contribute <laughs> because everything's so goddamn janky. Let me go to the, let me go to the chat. Uh, Cold Blood Sensei says, what's up? Not so much, console brother. Uh, Holsey22, you said, yeah. My Nightbot dropped the free messaging out. Come on, man. Hit, you know, hit us up. It don't, that don't cost y'all a dime, man. Uh, and Cold Blood Sensei, question for Neth. How long is he going to cap for Xbox and just admit Sony is the place to be? How long are you going to do that, Nethel? L listen here. Listen here. Sony is the place to be if you want the great exclusives, if you want the marketing deals, if you want that early access and DLC, hence Call of Duty. But, man, I like that Xbox controller. I just can't help yeah. it. I like that ecosystem. I'm just tied to it. And, you know, I'm going to go down with the ship. I'm going to go down with the ship. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about that, too. That's all in the topics. Um, I'm going to say this, though. Um, yeah, that controller is a big deal. That control, we can, we'll elaborate on this more. Like people laugh at us and say, oh man, um, you know, y'all stuck on a controller because I will say that for PlayStation people, for the simple fact that Halo, people that are hardcore PlayStation people, this generation, they've had no need to come to Xbox so they've been stuck on their DS4s or whatever. But prior to this generation, y'all have had experience with, um, 
the Xbox controller because of Halo. I'm letting you guys know that hardcore Xbox people solely stuck to Xbox because Xbox supplied all of our needs. You know what I'm saying? Maybe in the PlayStation 2 era, but PlayStation 3 definitely. Like, I there was only two games that I played on the PlayStation 3, and the games may have been cool, but I hated the overall experience because of the controller. And my thoughts are, again, if Sony, if you're listening, which we know they are. Look, y'all, we know they're listening. If y'all can, if y'all really want to knock it out the park and, and, and knock the win out of Microsoft, y'all need to do what the Elite Controller does, what Microsoft does with the Elite Controller. Come up with, like, game schemes for your controller and come up with a controller that has the thumbstick placement of the Xbox. That eliminates the last wall. If they were to do something like that, Nethos, would it be easier for you to transition? I mean, it would be easier for me to transition, but I feel like I'm tied to the ecosystem. Okay. Like, everything's just set up there. That's the thing. <laughs> Cold bless his they say laugh out loud. I'm just effing with you. I really don't care to be honest. He said, keep y'all janky asses over there. And hey, he said, listen here. We got about <laughs> one more generation to go. <laughs> then it's over. Mm. Do us a favor, tweet this out. Let everybody know on social media that we are here. Also, if you notice any issues with the stream, because I'm doing something a little different, I normally like try to shut everything down, but I got a few things open right now. Um you know, because for some integration purposes, if y'all could do us a huge favor, tweet this out because I'm not able to right now. I don't know why. Not my own thing, you know, but yeah, tweet us out. Let everybody know that we are, hold on. Well, I might be able to. Ooh, I just, I just love, I just love technology, baby. But uh, yeah, tweet this out. Let everybody know that we're live. I'd appreciate it. Um, with that being said, let's get into these topics, man. Let's get into these topics. Topic number one. It's Copa. Are you not familiar with Copa, uh, uh, Nethals, and, and, and all the ramblings about it? it? You know, I really am not. Like, I understand it's something to do with the children. And uh, <laughs> if you provide content that's not necessarily appropriate for the children on YouTube, you're facing some serious trouble. Yeah. That's all I really understand from it. And, and and to be fair, that's the, the general understanding that um, a lot of content creators have about what's going on with Copa. Um, and I'm going to be honest with you. I'm, if you guys heard me ramble on in previous podcasts about the government, I don't trust the government at all. I don't trust no political party. I'm, I'm apolitical. I don't pl- believe in no political party. And um, I use... Ephedra as an example. Um, Ephedra was like this super drug that uh, was like a um, substance, not a substance, it was like a supplement that you would use to help you lose weight and give you energy. Uh, We had a football player that unfortunately passed away because he didn't use it properly. Just like you can die away from not using anything properly. You can die from drinking too much water, right? But, um, He didn't use it properly. He died, unfortunately. And then the government saw it as their way to get in and say, "Uh uh-uh, this is horrible. You know, this ain't great. And they didn't ban ephedra. They just made it into pharmaceutical grade so they could uh, tax it. And I get get why a lot of people are apprehensive about COPA because they feel that COPA is going to do the same thing. But just to enlighten those, um, that may not be that familiar with COPA. What's going on here is that um, the government fined YouTube because YouTube was out of ordinance with one of its regulations, which is COPA, the Child Protection Act. And what it does is it it, 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 it forces you to label your content as targeting children, which is fine. As a, as a parent, I, I get it, even though my kids are just crazy anyway. It don't matter what the hell they watch. But... Um, they don't want you to target kids and, and, and YouTube was, was out of line of that, that ordinance ordinance. And because they were, they got slapped with a $150 million fine. Well, to advert any other future occurrences, what YouTube decided to do lethals is they said, we're going to pass the buck on to y'all. We don't create your, we don't control your content. We just provide the platform. So the FCC or FTC, whoever it is comes back, 
We're telling them to come see your asses. And y'all motherfuckers going to get hit with up to $42,000. And everybody start freaking out because they started jumping the gun and they thought that anything that appealed to kids was going to be the case. And I, to that, I, I, I say there's a couple of good videos. Bunny put one in our um, um, DM. And I, if I can find a link to that one, I would, I'm would. i going to put that in the chat. But Griffin Gaming, the homie, the guard, Griffin Gaming, Neethals, he dropped a COPA video that covers this in totality in his, in his special way. It's a very powerful and impactful video. And pretty much what it says is that we ain't got nothing to worry about. We ain't got nothing to worry about. Just make sure that you label your shit, not for kids. You're going to see the same shit from YouTube. If you're, if you are making content for kids, then you're in trouble because you may be in compliance, but they're slicing your money by 80%. <laughs> they're slicing your ad revenue by 80%. Now on the heels of that, Nethos, I want to ask you this, even though this is, all my blabbering might be the first bit of detail that you got about this. Why do you think that YouTube was slash a kid compliant channel by 80%? Why do you think they're doing that? Uh, I don't know. Maybe they don't want YouTube to have as much influence on children. Like I, I honestly I have no idea myself. Um, to, to let you know how the government acts, and YouTube is aware of that as, as well, they're doing this because they want, because they know the government's going to come back. The government is not just going, it's easier for the government to, to punch on one big entity than it is to follow a bunch of smaller entities. Um, I see homeboy, uh, uh, oh no, he might, he might just be rating the, the chat. I see um, Noah, Noah, if you want to hop in, to the PNTS Discord, feel free to do so. Yeah, there you go, Noah. Just hop in. We're in a, we're in the prognosis. I haven't made a channel for this yet, but hop on in if you want to talk about this or talk talk in general. Um, it's easier for the government to punch on YouTube, and YouTube knows that, so they're going to punish the compliant channels by taking away their money. So they're actually taxing the people that might be in compliance or whatever, cutting their money by 80%, holding on to it just in case the government comes back after them. So it is a big whoop to do. It is something for people to be concerned about, but content creators like you and me, Neethos, we ain't got nothing to worry about, but it's still foul. And to that, I say this, um, before I cover my next point in regards to this, that's why I don't fuck with YouTube solely. That's why this, this program here Air solely on Twitch. And we were having a discussion last night, Nethos, talking about, you know, the future content from the broadband bullies. And I had made the suggestion while we were in the meeting. Like, we all individually, along with contributing to, to Triple B, we got to establish ourselves individually. But I implore anybody that if you're trying to get off your feet doing this shit, do not s s rely on YouTube. YouTube is so fucking hideous as a channel as an organization, as a record label, that I, I think that's foul. Um, what are your thoughts on that? If you have any needles before I shut up and move on to the next thing. Uh, I guess I'll just echo basically what you've been saying, man. I mean, the way YouTube works nowadays, like they really don't help these little creators go anywhere. Like they really just want to stick to the people they have. Mm -hmm. Like to rise up on YouTube is just a completely different game these days. Yeah. Yeah, it was a lot. I mean, uh, for like now, you got to have a thousand followers and in order to make money, it doesn't matter how many people viewed your shit. So, you know, they put up these artificial walls and all this other stuff, which is fine. Um, but if you're a content creator and you're like, OK, I, I, I'm, I'm interested in doing this as beyond slightly a hobby it, it's going to be very challenging on YouTube and YouTube just throws up walls that they shouldn't. With that being said, and I kind of touched on it a little bit. I mean, with your personal, I wanted Z to be here, but he couldn't make it um, to talk a little bit more about this. But with your personal experience, I mean, how do you, I, I, you know, I know as of late you've been on hiatus, but what what are your thoughts on YouTube as of late? What have you experienced? Um, Yeah, I am been on hiatus for a little while, but it's like, 
I don't really understand like YouTube's perspective. So like, remember like back then when we had I think a Logan Paul situation where uh, he went to the woods. Yeah, and I think you guys can remember from there. Yeah, their reaction was not to necessarily punish Logan Paul, but to essentially punish the smaller creators that mm. it made it harder for you to get partnered and so on. Yeah. Uh, in my opinion, that's just backwards. Like, you're not really stopping the next Logan Paul. You're just <laughs> making it harder just for the current people you have exactly. or new people who might come in. Like, in, in my opinion, unless if you, I, I get it, YouTube is the biggest brain there is, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it's not going to be easy to take down YouTube. But if they keep changing these policies, if the policies keep getting worse and worse, who's to say a competitor can't just rise up out of nowhere? YouTube was nothing at one point and blew exactly. up. I get it has the backing of Google now. Mm hmm. But, you know, a lot of these content creators aren't happy, and all of them just want the money. If you can make a better site, who knows? Yeah. Holy Oh, uh-oh. What the hell? Damn new phone. My, my Pixel phone. It has a mind of its own. I'm, I'm loving it. I'll talk about that some other time. But, uh, yeah, I and, and beyond that, because Nethos isn't really on Twitch right now, and I, I think you have a Mixer channel there, right? Thank you. Uh, yes, I do, but I also do some Twitch. Oh, you do some Twitch. Okay. So, you know, I, I, I run simultaneous streams. I kind of been on hiatus from Twitch because we're doing some things. And we'll talk about that later. But um, I've noticed that Twitch is a lot more accommodating to my content, to my, um, you know what I'm saying, to my ability to get kickback. You know what I'm saying? Um, Z could have better spoke about this and, and maybe we'll follow up with him again in another show. But, you know, when Z had that issue where he got booted off of YouTube because the diabetic society, whoever it was, <laughs> came after his ass, <laughs> you know, I mean, due to all of you guys that support him, you know what I mean? You, you were able to follow him and make that transition seamless to where it was, it was more worth it. It was more worth it to be on Twitch. You know what I'm saying? Even though it's easier for people to get to him on YouTube. But with that being said, we know there's a dedicated group of people on Twitch. So we are, me and Z, we are working on something to have like consistent uh, content coming to Twitch. So just stay tuned for that. That being said, yeah, man, it's just, you know, I wanted to take this opportunity to say, screw YouTube for its practices. (laughs) It's, um not the most accommodating platform because it is the biggest platform. As Nethal said, a lot of people grind and put a lot of hard work into it. And this is how they pay you back. You know, if you're a compliant channel, they're going to, they're taking your money and they're basically just putting it in a pot to wait for the government to come slap box with them again. You know what I'm saying? And it's, it's, it's another instance of these big companies and the government just pilfering the little guy. You know what I mean? But that's here nor there. All right. Uh, let me go to the chat. Paul G12000 said, I found this dog shit. Platinum C. Yo, I think Platinum's. No, pl- yeah, Platinum might be at work today. And um, all right then. All right. And again, the free messaging app is there, y'all. Show your, show your boys some love. I want to open up the phone lines. I know that may have rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. I, I'm just saying, you know. I, I'd really appreciate it. And I do want to open up the phone lines, but in order for me, honestly, in order for me to keep this stuff going, I got to at least come out even, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Here and there, you know, so I want to open up the phone lines. Y'all got to help me do that. So hit the free message in that, you know what I'm saying? Help out any way that you can. It'll, it'll help keep that rolling. With that being said, let's go on to the big topic Right now, while we got the homeboy, the expert, the subject matter expert, the SME, as we call him in my line of business, uh, Nethal's here. Halo Reach on PC. Halo is Halo Reach. Is, it's been it's been on commercial release on PC and on console, right? As part of the Master Chief Collection, is that right, Nethal's? Uh yeah, that's correct. So the only weird part about the Master Chief Collection is it's not fully released on PC. What they're doing is they're doing game by game. <laughs> So right now, Halo Reach has officially come to the PC, and the next game would follow would be Halo Combat Evolved because that's chronological order, and they're going to slowly work all the way up to Halo 4. Oh, okay. Okay. What the heck? This thing don't stop. Okay. (laughs) All right. Um, Either way, though, I haven't actually played Halo Reach on my PC. Like, I got it downloaded. I just haven't had time to boot it up. But I hear, you know, apart from small bugs or whatever on day one, you know, server issues and all that, sadly, that's a typical part of the multiplayer experience these days. 
Uh, the game has been working pretty well. Like uh, they have all the PC settings you would want, you know, your FOV sliders, your point of view, all that stuff. Um, the frame rate's phenomenal. I remember playing the beta, and on a 1070, I was doing 200 plus frames. I get it's a very old game; it's 10 years old. But hey, PC gamers, one thing they love even more than gaming itself is seeing those numbers and their frame rate. Yeah. When you see like a high frame rate, I don't know what it is about the PC community, but they go bananas. That's partly why uh, Sea of Thieves actually does fairly well on PC more than people would want because it's a low graphical fidelity game. They get the high frame rates. Even on a low-end setup, uh, the game runs phenomenally. Um, other than that, you know, P Halo Reach is, you know, a dream. It's great on console. From what I played on the beta, you know, I had the PC beta at least, uh, the game ran smooth. Uh, I think it actually plays better with the mouse and keyboard setup. Because the DMR, the way that works with the mouse, is just perfect. Mm -hmm. Like the the uh, work with the bloom and all that, mm -hmm. it was almost designed for a mouse. I like I can't describe it. Um, I, I my little bit of time in the in the beta, and big ups to Nethal for helping me get in that beta. Um, but my little bit of time in there, I was I was highly impressed. Um, I was highly impressed because. As Nethal alluded to, when you take a game that wasn't designed from the ground up to work with mouse and keyboard and you make it seamlessly in integrate with that function. Honestly, it's better. Yeah, and it's better. Yeah. And you and the controls and everything. Everything's so smooth. Even though, you know, it, the control scheme isn't what the current control, control scheme is in, 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 in shooters nowadays, so it might throw you off a little bit. It's still yeah. like it feels good. That's what I want to say. It feels really good. You 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 feel the same way, Neefles? Yeah, man. I mean, that game, it generally feels like a modern game to me. Like, I get it. It has some old mechanics. It is a 10-year-old game. And, like, Z was playing it. He couldn't get into it. But to me, it feels like, you know, a game that could have released this generation, even graphic-wise. Like, it might have been, you know, a smaller indie game, double-A type game. But it even looked like it's, it could be from the generation. I think it's very impressive. It's just so clean looking. It is. It is. It is. Uh, uh, homie uh, Cold Blood Sid they said, Halo Reach is reaching for those 50 concurrent players online. Oh, shit. He's a, like Gears 5. Now, you know what? Um, I'm going to say this. Uh, Halo, it, all of the Bungie Halos, have they hit different. You know what I'm saying? They hit different than these three four three halos and even gears mm -hmm. you know even gears you know like they're, they, they're not touching the bungee halo so they hit differently with the crowd like this is this is this is a big deal on pc you know what i'm saying ain't no ain't no ain't no doubt now you know but that's a great segue though Nethos, unless you wanted to talk a little bit more about your experience before we go into my second point here uh really nothing with my experience but like we have to also remember you know Halo 1 and 2 were on PC. Like, the PC community was robbed of these games, especially the Bungie ones, because they're supposed to get Halo 3, and they're supposed to get Halo Reach at some point. Okay. But they never got those games. So, you know, this is like a Homecoming or whatever, and, you know, it's good for the PC crowd. Like, imagine being a consumer, getting the first two versions of a game, and then not getting any ver any more versions of the game. You know, that, that would probably rub you the wrong way, to be honest. I mean, I get why Microsoft did it, but, you know, I, I think it's a good thing that the game's hit PC and that's great for them. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, um, I, if you try this, especially on PC, if you got game pass, I mean, you, you had some problems with the windows store, right? Yeah. I had to update my insider build a whole bunch and then it worked. I mean, but I, I highly recommend like just giving this a shot. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. It's pretty neat. Again, it's not, it's not going to trump new experiences, but as gamers, you know, um, I, I say it's definitely worth trying out. I was highly impressed by it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. I mean, do you know what actually, I don't know if you've seen this meme, Moss, but I think it's pretty funny. So there's a meme around saying like, you know, how I started gaming in 2010. It shows Halo Reach because it launched in 2010. Minecraft because it really took off for that year. And, you know, people were playing Modern Warfare a lot, you know, like MW2, all that. Yeah. Now, practically in 2020, right? We have the remaster of Halo Reach, <laughs> the remake of Modern Warfare, and Minecraft is still exactly. killing it. Yeah, 
Yeah. I think that's just crazy. No, it is. It is. But, you know, it, just, it goes to show you, and I'm going to say this, and this is going to be unpopular. Get your thoughts on it. Nethos, have you, have you fall off the cliff with me? It just shows, it just goes to show you that, I hate to say it, this generation just wasn't that innovative. It wasn't that groundbreaking to where we're now latching back to the older experiences to, to, to bring back, not, I don't think just nostalgia, but quality. Like I said, the, yeah. the bungee, the bungee halos are of a quality that we haven't even seen in a long time. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we, we talked about, you know, them bringing back modern warfare to its es- essence. And even though I was never even a modern warfare fan, them bringing it back to its essence and expanding on it. I love this campaign, man. This campaign is fucking awesome, you know? Um, and then, like we said, Minecraft is still killing it. I just think that it overall just shows that this generation lacked innovation. It was all about compute units and polygons, with a few exceptions. What do you think about that? Oh, yeah, let's get that phone. Um, yeah, but that that's my thoughts. You know, we'll we'll get his thoughts on it once we get back. But let's get to the chat. Uh, Paul G had. 12. Okay, I'm back. Okay, go. Well, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, Nethos that. You, uh, you know, that's how the uh, generation was really introduced. Like, you know, when a new generation comes, obviously it has more powers. PlayStation really marketed their power into their advantage or whatever. I think they did a great job with that. But I think at the end of the day, it's a factor with the third party. I can't blame any of this on Microsoft or Sony. Of course, maybe they have a small part to blame. But at the end of the day, the majority of the games you play are multiplats. They come from the third party. And the third party, let's be honest, Moss, I think they just did bad this generation. EA, yeah, I get. I mean, they were bad last generation at one mm-hmm. point. But my God, did they really fall from they crisis this generation. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I, th- I think it's just this whole new mo- model of microtransactions and so on. I don't have an issue with microtransactions. If you do cosmetics, whatever. Mm-hmm. But I think a lot of these companies just did not know how to implement it, and they tried implementing it in the worst of ways. I mean, Battlefront 2 is a famous example. I mean, even... Oh, that's one I forgot to talk about. Battlefront 2 now is a completely different game from when it launched, but it was such a bad experience, such a bad taste in your mouth. You know, the game really can't find any redemption. Yeah. I mean, I play it now, mm-hmm. and I think it's fantastic. Mm-hmm. But you know it's it's too late. People right. will not try it again, and you know that that really goes around the board. And plus, this is the generation for broken games. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my God, were so many games just broken throughout the whole generation? Well, I I, I think it. I think the it, it, again, people aren't going to like this, but it's the truth. We got to remember this stuff ain't cheap, man. Like fuck, forget, yeah. Forget all that stuff, neat those where people say, oh they're making more money and it's lies. No, like get, this is technology. Come on. Let's put on our thinking caps as technology grows. It gets more expensive and the toolkits to develop games. They didn't simplify development. They just expanded what the outcome was. It still takes more and more people than it ever did to make these poly- polygons and compute units work. Right? So with that being said, I'm gonna shut up. Um, shit is more expensive the games are still $60, and what they tried to do, Nethos, is I think instead of focusing on innovation, they focus on how they can come up with a quick buck despite these rising costs and despite the fact that the revenue that they're pulling in is flat. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. What do you think hence, about that? It's the loot box because they were inspired from the mobile industry because that yeah. really took off over there. Look, I mean, let's be honest, Moss. I, I know you're not too far into the new Star Wars, right? The Jedi mm-hmm. Fallen Order. Yeah, not too far. Uh, I, you probably need to play a little bit more to really give your real thoughts on it but i'll say this the game looks fantastic on pc it looks a little it looks okay on console but like some details in the game are just off i mean especially when you play through it yeah. you'll notice like the details are just a little off like the facial animations or whatever sometimes it looks great but a lot of times you're like huh they could do a little bit better and i think and i've been talking to know about this you know it's weird we get a single player story driven game no microtransactions nothing right yeah and notice that game is built on a budget now yeah Yep. Like, besides Sony and maybe a few other games, all these games feel like they're on a budget if they try to go, you know, just a full experience almost. Yeah. No, you're, you're, you're totally and, right. I mean, it just shows the rising costs. Like, it is not cheap to make these games, so it's hard for these publishers to invest into them. Like, look, EA is fucked up, but can you really blame them if you're a business? Like, like what's the return on Jedi Final Order? What's the guaranteed return? Exactly. You know, it's not easy. It's not it's like just hand them a whole bunch of money. Yep. You may not make that money back. Totally agree. Totally agree. 
100, 150% right. So we got to understand, guys, that I get it. Like Nethel said, Battlefront 2 microtransactions were egregious, right? Um, and we, we keep our foot on the necks and shit like that. But overall, wanting microtransactions to get, like these companies are going to look for ways to make money to absorb these rising costs, or you're going to continue to either to get these, these shitty results. You're going to get these shitty yeah, results. And, and nobody's going to jump on the boat of paying more for a game. That, that will not happen. Exactly. Yeah. You know, but I mean, if you raise that with, shit to $80, you'll, there'll be a riot. Yeah, there will be a riot. But I mean, and then. Guess what? You ain't going to get nothing but $2 Ori in the Blind Forces, right? <laughs> That's all you're going to get. I mean, what's another famous example? Moss, The Outer Worlds. I haven't beat it. You haven't beat it. Uh-uh. But we can agree to this. While I like the game, you may not necessarily love the dialogue, the vast amount of dialogue. Mm-hmm. Um, the game's very much on a budget. It mm-hmm. looks good. Yeah. It has a decent amount of content, but it, it's a double-A game. Double-A game. It, mm-hmm. it is what it is. Yep, yep. I mean, I appreciate for what it is and what they had to do. And again, I ain't got to like every game because I know the vast majority of Obsidian games I'm going to like, maybe with the exception of Grounded. But <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But with that being said, to Nethel's point, yeah, it definitely is. Uh, it's it's going to be a problem. Um, we got the homie Cold Blood Sensei. He's, he's helping us out here. Can we get a couple more of these? And maybe some donations. Y'all look at the screen. Last people that helped out was Biggie and my homie, Mr. Righteous Fish. You know what I'm saying? That was like months ago. You know what I mean? But with that said, uh, we got Cold Blood Sensei dropping something in the free messaging app. He says, Most and Neth, please tell me what is your favorite Xbox game of all time and why you don't care about Nintendo or even speak of them. Ooh. You want you want me to start or you gonna start on that, Nethels? Uh, you can go ahead. <laughs> You motherfucker. Um, okay, so I will say that the reason why that, uh, oh, or no, no, before I get into my reasons, the Nintendo, uh, why I don't speak of Nintendo, uh, my favorite 360, uh, my favorite console is the 360. My favorite Xbox game, even though it ended up not being an exclusive game, is Bioshock. Um, if you want first party, really don't, I'm not. You know, that's what I said. I'm I'm one of those weird Xbox guys. I never really cared for their first party, but Bioshock um, is my favorite um, Xbox timed exclusive, right, game of all time. Um, the reason why I personally don't speak on Nintendo is because my history with Nintendo is a little spotty. Um, I loved it. When I was growing up, when I was, like, young, um, Nintendo had changed the game for us. They, they, they brought gaming out of the arcades. And I used to be, I was one of those nerds at, with a pocket full of quarters at the arcade every Saturday. Um, when we got to Nintendo's in the home, that changed everything, right? So um, I love the NES um, and I hated the Sega Master System, but I love the Genesis and I hated the Super NES. I didn't care for any Nintendo console or handhelds, none of that shit, until the GameCube came out. And when the GameCube came out, um, it I, I really liked that. And, but it was short-lived, right? And then we had the Wii and we got all this other... I'm, I'm a hardcore... I love hardcore content. Not saying that the Switch doesn't provide that, but what I like fidelity... I love the portability thing. That's why I, I, you know, I got positive things to say about Stadia. But I like hardcore content, and that's not Nintendo's biggest foray right now. Nothing, everything doesn't have to be for me. But I personally don't talk about Nintendo because it just doesn't appeal to me. You know, this, so those are my thoughts. Nethel, what, what, what's your Nethel's? What's your favorite Xbox game? I think we know the answer to that. And uh, how come you don't talk much about Nintendo, even though you have a Switch? Uh. Well, I mean, to be honest, the Nintendo part. I mean, nobody wants to hear that shit. <laughs> so that one's pretty easy. It I think Bunny's the only one who can talk about Nintendo, make it sound interesting. <laughs> but uh, uh, Baron certainly doesn't do it. Yeah. Um, but I guess my favorite Xbox game, you know, obviously it's going to be a Halo. Uh-huh. I'm debating between Halo 3 and Reach, but I think as an overall game, overall experience, Halo Reach does take the crown because of its great forge, its fantastic campaign. Halo 3's campaign wasn't honestly the best. Like, it was... Me- it was a little above average, in my opinion, for a Halo franchise. And uh, you know what? The Reach multiplayer is pretty good. Halo 3 is slightly better, but just as an overall game, Halo Reach, I think, take the crown. 
<laughs> oh, excuse me. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. I love, I love Halo. I, I, I did. And did you have to ask favorite first party or? Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you, that was your favorite uh, Xbox. Yeah, is favorite first party or favorite Xbox game altogether? Oh yeah, Fav- well, favorite Xbox game. You know, Halo Reach, but first party for Microsoft. Ooh, and you know what? I, I want to say Bungie, right? But mm-hmm. Bungie kind of broke up. I don't know if that's fair enough to say. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Ep- Epic wasn't first party either. Yeah. Microsoft first party was horrible. Wasn't it was it? horrible. Yeah, that's what I said. I, I, it was their collab. It was their ability to collaborate that made them great. You know, their ability. Wow, Microsoft first party is really bad. I yeah, can't even. Really I don't bad. like any of them. Then. <laughs> you know, it was I, I don't necessarily care for Forza. Playground Games wasn't even a yeah, fucking first party until yeah, recently. Yeah, exactly. I don't. I, all right, well, they get the L in first party. <laughs> exactly. If there. that was your point, Cold Blood, which it probably was, <laughs> <laughs> then, then, then job well done. Okay, but yeah. Um, so before we move on from Halo Reach, Nethos, I want to get your idea on this because um, you're the big Halo enthusiast of the, of the team, right? With the job that, the well done job that they did, and they had help though, right? Like 343 didn't exclusively work on the, the PC port, right? Yeah, I'm sure they had help from like the other little teams that help with Halo. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, that being said, do you think that this the the fluidity and all this great stuff is it any indication of any signs of greatness we're gonna get with Halo? Or you think that's just a long stretch? Uh, I mean, realistically, it's probably a long stretch. But I will say this: when they added Halo Reach to the MCC. It wasn't like, you know, ODST, like, oh, you can just play the game. Now when you just boot up the MCC, it's a completely different startup. 343 has updated, you know, their little logo. Like, it's not what it used to be. Like, the transition, all that's different. And even they completely changed the main menu to be, like, Reach-orientated. And it just feels like it's a different style of 343. Like, maybe they have, like, a different setup going, a different team dynamic going. Who knows? I think at the end of the day, after releasing Halo 4, after releasing Halo 5, and trying all this modern innovation, they might just realize, and the MCC is proving it all the time, look, the the older play style is just the play style your audience wants. Yeah, You're never going to get back the Call of Duty crowd, the Battlefield crowd, and even the new Overwatch crowd. You're just not going to really get them back. Yeah. But what you do have, and that's dwindling, is your hardcore crowd. Mm-hmm. The people who bought Halo for the Halo experience. And if they can't play your shit, there's something wrong. Look, Halo 5 is not a bad multiplayer experience. It's actually a pretty great multiplayer shooter. But it is not the Halo experience you're looking for. I've always said they could compromise, make another Halo 5-esque game. But just give me my classic modes, you know, take off the sprint, stuff like that. Or maybe make it more akin to Halo Reach's style. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, they're going to have to really pick and choose. I think they know what they're doing for the campaign. Like, I really don't have much fear for the campaign. Because Halo 4's campaign was good. They say they're going to add open world elements. I just hope it comes out fully cooked. We don't need another half-cooked game. That's what Microsoft's really famous for. Especially this generation. Oh, and this yeah. generation yeah. in totality had a lot of half-cooked games all around. But you know what? I think they need to just nail the single player and the multiplayer. And I do like some things at 343. I do like who was promoted. Um, I also like the art direction they're going, fully classic. I think they're going to embrace nostalgia and what made Halo Halo. That's my hopes for the game, at least. Cold Blood Sensei in the chat says to you, Nethos, he says, Neth, don't you think it's weird how fast Nintendo recovered from the dog shit Wii U? I still can't believe it. What are your thoughts on that? Look, man, I think that proves that you can't just have only good games. Good games will help carry you, right? Like, that's the main component. But your hardware has to do something. I mean, I get it. The Wii U sounds like an add-on. That's partly why I probably didn't even sell. Yeah. But the Switch portability is that gimmick Nintendo needed. It's a hybrid. And you know what? It might sound kind of stupid. Like, do you really need to take your games on the go? But I'm telling you, once you experience it, mm-hmm. once you're like, oh, I need to go over to this room, and you just, like, you know, put your Joy-Cons on the Switch and take it with you. Yeah. It might sound stupid, but my God, is that shit amazing. Yeah. I just wish the Switch was <laughs> worth the damn thing and actually would run the games decently when yeah, it's undocked. Yeah. My God, does it look ugly. But, like, you know, that that's why some of the streaming stuff, if your internet would be good, if your mm-hmm. IPS or whatever, if that would work, 
you know, that shit's going to be revolutionary. We'll, we have to wait and see if it all works out. I think Google Stadia has a, a great start. Uh, technology wise, I just wish they wise, it yeah, better and like you know, put it on my iPhone. I'll be playing Destiny or something, maybe. But, um, yeah, you, you know what? Kudos to Nintendo. And the reason Microsoft didn't recover is because Microsoft didn't put out any worthwhile games besides Gears 5, and I guess we'll say Gears 4 and the Forza Horizon series. What's been good for Microsoft this entire generation? Like Quantum Break, it's a good game, yeah, but it doesn't yeah. feel like a complete game to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. It feels like it was the shell of what possibly Control was, and then Control wasn't fully fleshed out because, like we all know, five of five games ain't, ain't, ain't in, on the top five list of of publishers, and we just it was just released that they only spent thirty million dollars to, or, or no, fifty, I think it was anywhere between thirty to fifty million dollars. But doesn't that show you how control. crazy Remedy is? They just needed that engine, and they were able to make control. Yeah, exactly. So you know, it's 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 um interesting to see. Like, imagine if you doubled that budget. Exactly. That's fucking yeah. crazy. Yeah, insanity, insane. And that may be why. And again, this is I don't want to go into a whole another subject, but that may be why the people on the board of the uh, the Game Awards felt like they should add control on the Game of the Year list. I haven't played it. I don't know. I know a lot of people are upset about it. I get your thoughts, Nethos, on that. If it <laughs> yeah, well, to that's going to be one of the topics. But, um, yeah, but with yeah that, I mean, I haven't played it either, but it looks like a game that's probably hand-heeled above Quantum Break, and I haven't met someone who doesn't like it more That doesn't like Break, it. Yeah, they least. just don't think that it's a, a Game of the Year contender. But, they pro- but I think we talked... Well, we'll talk about that later, but we talked about why certain games we believe we've talked about this behind the scenes why we believe certain games like gears didn't make it and we can elaborate on why something like control probably did make it you know what i'm saying yeah um, so and, and 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 it could be an agenda involved but you know we'll get into that um with that being said you know i thank you every so cold blood since they sent that to nethos and before we move on he said he says to me bioshock would have never guessed why why i, I love getting hey, look so Real quick, if I can do this, uh, let me do this real quick. So the homeboy, uh, the real Maslin, he put out a, I can find it. Oh, his list? Yeah, his list, right? And a lot of people had responded to me behind the scenes and was surprised at my list. I don't know why. I can find My response to Maslin's list. I can't find it. Oh, hold on. Uh, and they probably were confused that it wasn't just Fallout 76 for all. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Here, here's the thing. Here's can I, I and I want to talk about that too. Um, just two seconds. Um, my big Emma, like I could be out here talking like and talking about the same shit that everybody else is talking about. And I'm not saying I'm 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 doing a gimmick. My thing is is that I don't like following a notion unless I'm playing around. I don't like following a notion that I know is not to be true. I don't regurgitate nonsense because it's popular. So, you know, my, me and Nethos talked about this a lot. My infinity for defending certain aspects of Fallout 76 was I was not defending the game. I was defend, I was combating the lies. And the same with Stadia. Like, I, there's, there's hell of five problems with Stadia. Like, for instance, I, 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 Darksiders Genesis. Cool game. I like it. I enjoy it. It's not, Nethos was laughing at me. He's like, look at this dog shit. It's not a $60 <laughs> game, which it isn't. It's a fun experience, but this is a new platform that's supposed to take off. It's cheaper on Steam. It's $24.99 on Steam. It's $40 on Stadia. You yeah, I mean? you see that twenty four ninety nine seems like a reasonable price. Exactly. To me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a cool game, and then don't get me wrong. I mean, I, I can get where fans of top down games would feel that forty dollars is worth it. Hey, I, I'll keep it real with you, Moss. That game looks like it should have been like one of the Stadia games they give you. <laughs> you like they should have just eat the cost and gave that to yeah, you. Yeah, I don't. I I get what they're trying to do. But they're not organized in what they're doing. And that's my biggest fear for this platform. It's not the structure. It's not the perform. I mean, I'm sorry. It's not the performance. The performance is real. Um, Mm -hmm. The 4K shit isn't going to be a big deal for long. People got to get used to the hardware. That's fine. The problem is the people leading this charge. 
God damn, they've done some stupid shit. Like, I'm going to say it right now. I'm, I wanted to keep this on the wraps, but, you know, we, we, we tell the truth here. So Stadia created this thing called the claw, right? It's something that you, you, you attach to your phone. Um, like kind of like how you attach the, the, to, to your controller to play X cloud, that, that infamous little doohickey. But the way the Stadia Claw is, it's better because it puts it right above the controller and it, it emulates more like the how the Wii is, you know, the, I mean, uh, uh, not the Wii, the Switch. And it's a better it's a better thing if you're playing on the go to have it in that way. The problem with the Claw that they created is it fucks up your controller. So they released some and they had to call them back two days later. Like, who does that? <laughs> how do you design a peripheral that fucks up your own device so so did it fuck up the google stadia controller yeah, or, like, can yep. you, or are you able to attach it to any controller no it it you can attach it to different controllers it won't fuck up other controllers but the way the stadia controller is designed it's made to be real nice and snug there but what it does is in, it's the it's detaching it it, that makes it a problem. It won't scratch up any other controller, but it'll scratch up the Stadia controller. Mm. And it has do you have do. the Stadia controller? Yeah, oh, well, yeah, you do. You got yeah. the Founders. Yeah, I got the Founders edition. Yeah. So, what do you feel about the Stadia controller? Like, I mean, I know they not necessarily like how it feels, but like I, they said, there's technology in there that helps with latency. There's something weird like that. Um, I'll, I'll put it like this. It's a nice. It feels good. I don't like. I normally don't like the thumbstick placement at the bottom, but yep. with Stadia, they spaced it just right to where it's good. So the playing with the controller feels good and I have no issues with the feel of the controller. The problem with the controller and how it works right now, and again, this is early access, is that it's working off a of technology to where it pings to a service center and it pings, yeah. to, you know, and it's pinging back. And what they did is they re they caused something called reverse drift, where if it's not wired to a device, it may feel like that you're trying to pull a cylinder block to move sometimes. You know what I mean? Because it's all based on your network. See, I get it that Bluetooth, it's supposed to be a stronger signal to Bluetooth and Bluetooth will cause drift. It causes reverse drift, which sometimes can be just as annoying. Um, it's a little bit easier to get used to, but I don't, I very rarely use my Stadia controller. I use, you can hardwire the, the, the great thing about Stadia is you can hardwire anything to anything. So I actually use my Xbox elite most of the time when I'm on my Chromecast, it's okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It really depends. It really depends. It's gotten better. So the technology is going to get better, but um, it's just a, it's, it's the setup that is not going to give you always a one, one V one match, but that's why I just hardwire everything. If that makes sense. Yeah, man. Like that technology is just really cool, but my God, that launch is bad. Yeah. They, yeah. They, they, Oh, I mean, I got a channel coming up for it. We're going to, I mean, we're going to talk about some of the, we want, I want to get all the bloviating and all the bullshit and all the idiot hurt stuff out of the way. So I can focus on stuff like this. That is a true, apparently issues. There's a lot of other great stadium podcasts yeah. out there too, where they talk about these issues too. So, yep. but I want to show you, I want to show you something real quick. If I can, let's see here. There we go. Those are my top five games all time. Uh, I love games where you journey. I just love them. You know what I'm saying? Like Fantasy Star 2 was a Genesis game. I think it came out in 1991. Metroid, you know, Pirates uh, for the Tandy 1000. Bioshock is a game where you journey in it. You know what I'm saying? And uh, Final Fantasy 3 slash Final Fantasy 6, which it, it, it's the same game, but on the Super NES, it was called Final Fantasy 3. On the uh, uh, PlayStation One, it was in, in in Japan. It's known as Final Fantasy VI. So I, I just love games where you journey. That, that's that's my kit and caboodle. So. so don't be don't be shocked, Cold Blood Sensei. Don't be shocked. But that said, right. okay, I'm back. So what was that? No, no, I was. Uh, they people were saying how shocked they were about the games that uh, I played and I had showed on my top five list. I just love games where you journey. That, that's my, big now my, uh, Moss, I know you like Bioshock, but weren't you one of the people that didn't like Bioshock infinite though? Oh my God. I, I, I feel like that was the controversial opinion you have of Bioshock. Yeah, Everybody hate, loves that one. 
I exact yeah. See, here's what I notice is that games have like hardcore elements when they get a cult following, but in order for them to appeal to the masses, they water down things to me. I notice this in everything. They water down things that brought people like me on to appeal to 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 the masses. And I noticed stuff like that because I was there from the beginning. And Bioshock Infinite had this convolute, the gameplay, gameplay is what made Bioshock, Bioshock. And Bioshock Infinite, I cut through that like butter. It wasn't hard. I had it on hard settings. I The story was convoluted, but it had a lot of story and a lot of cinema. And that's why people loved it. And even uh, Ken, Ken Levine's Acid Tripped solo or whatever the fuck he was doing with the people playing the banjo at the end all the shit was just weird to me bro i ain't gonna lie. it just was just weird I, I was not digging bioshock infinite so that's my opinion for what it's worth <laughs> <laughs> but i guess we can move on uh all right so all right my favorite subject where's dirt griggity at phil spencer <laughs> It, okay, is Phil Spencer any good? So I want to preface this and I'm going to turn it over to Neethals. Just so everyone is aware here, this is the Hard Knock Digital Culture here on Twitch, meaning we highlight everything that's hardcore as far as gaming is concerned. Phil Spencer and Xbox is, Xbox is in a hardcore digital, uh, hardcore uh, um, watch list, meaning we're a little skeptical about how they're supporting hardcore games. Like we keep hearing shit like games ain't about bullets and headshots and all this other shit and the shit that he pulled at E3 and now he got Obsidian in her 20 year plus history of making hardcore style games. Now they coming out with Honey, I Shrunk the Roaches. Like this shit is all suspect to us here on this channel. So they're on our watch list. But with that being said, even if they weren't on our watch list, even if I liked what Xbox was doing, 2019 is a year that Microsoft should have soared. And I want to get Neethal's thoughts on this. Sony stumbled all over itself first with Days Gone, not being at E3, then de the controversial Death Stranding where it seemed like uh, uh, Kojima's buddy and, 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 and uh, uh, bro love uh, Jeff Keighley is trying to help him out as much as he can. Like everything about 2019... When it comes to Sony, is is the non-year of greatness. This should be the year that Microsoft is flying high. And every time things look good for Microsoft, Phil Spencer puts his foot in his mouth and creates a, a, a ripple effect of um, bad press for Microsoft. And that's what slows down any good press to help bolster 2019 for them. So... That's my thoughts. I want to get Neethal's thoughts on that. And then we're going to break some of this shit down to, to, to see if Phil is just good at this or, or not. You know what I'm saying? Um, what are your thoughts on that, Neethal's, about what I just said? Well, we, we got to think about this. So Phil Spencer, when he first got into the office, a lot of people really liked, what he, or liked the idea of what he was going to do. Uh, they made hashtags that can fill we trust and all that. Mm -hmm. You know, he was pretty popular when he first got there. Even I thought, like, oh, he's going to do a great job. But now we're looking at a bird eye view. Uh, in hindsight, we have to think, did Phil Spencer do the great things when he first came in? Or was that this things already set up anyways? Yeah. Like, getting the connect out of the box is not a Phil Spencer move. Mm -hmm. I don't know why people give him credit for that. I think that was in the works before the Xbox even launched. Yeah, because they saw they were getting their ass kicked in pre-orders. <laughs> Not because it's just the DRM; it's just a more expensive system. Of gotcha. course, they got to unbundle that shit. I don't know whose idea to keep it bundled was. Yeah, but uh, if it was Johnny D, well, shit, he got fired for that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Anyways, uh, let's see. He released Sunset Overdrive and stuff. Those were all games under technically Donny T. Mm -hmm. The Donny um, He canceled shit. He got rid of Lionhead. Yeah. Like, Ooh. at the end of the day, like, unless someone wants to bring it up in the chat, I don't think Phil Spencer's, like, this person we've been hyping up. Yeah. Like, I, I really don't. I get, Maybe he's a cool guy. Maybe some people are friends with him. But at the end of the day, like, he's not the guy you want to bring back Xbox. Like, Xbox was known to me as a hardcore platform with the Halo being innovative with Otagi, Mass Effect, Bioshock. Not all those are first party, but still, they were exclusive at the time. 
And when you look at the games Phil Spencer likes, you know, he loves Voodoo Vince. Mm-hmm. He loves, like, this point-and-click game. Like, he loves those cartoony-esque experiences. It's not a coincidence you keep getting them. Like, I, I don't know. And, like, even Gears 5, right? Gears 5 might be Microsoft's best exclusive of this generation. He did not even really promote that until the very end. Mm-hmm. He didn't. He went on stage and said, uh, video games are not headshots and bullets, right? Like, I, I just feel like his interests aren't the same as a lot of the hardcore's interests. And that, that that's unfortunate because the Xbox was a hardcore box. Like, I always say this. Even though the Xbox is known as a shooter box, fuck it. Be the shooter box. That's who you are. That's what we want. When you make those shooter experiences, when you bring back what made Xbox great, you know, the Halo and Gears done the right way, the community gets excited. This, these new experiences aren't working for you. I'm sorry. Like, Sea of Thieves might find a success, but I guarantee you if it didn't release on PC, that game would have flopped. I, I think what people need to do, Nethos, is they got to ask themselves, are they focused on the save or are they focused on the content? And what I, this is what I mean by that. Um, I don't buy into Phil Spencer saved Xbox. I don't buy into that. I don't either now. I don't buy into that bullshit. But let's just say if he did. Let's go into an alternate reality, an alternate galaxy, Nathals, where Phil Spencer said, Hey, N- N- Satya, you're going to close down Xbox tomorrow, but here goes all. Here goes my PowerPoint of ideas. And then Nas Satya <laughs> says, Oh, shit, Phil, I was wrong. You're right. We're gonna oh keep God. Xbox That's open. Xbox YouTubers describe that shit too. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> but with that being said, and Cole Bless says, "Thank you." I'm gonna get to you in two seconds. With that being said, right? Um, I don't. But let's 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 say that we do buy into that. Okay. <sighs> if he did save them. Are we celebrating that Xbox is just still around or do we celebrate that Xbox is pumping out great content, right? Like, um, they're making more money than they ever have, okay? I don't want to hear this. It takes time, takes time, it takes time. Sony was selling lampshades and selling the old tofu in the back of the refrigerator and over a three-year span still was able to put out hits like The Last of Us, you know what I'm saying, at the end of the generation, and they were able to buy great second-party exclusives that helped boost their, their, their console at the end of the generation with that whole debacle, right? I don't understand why we are celebrating Phil like he's brought us the next Halo. He's giving us grounded. He's giving us uh, uh, fucking Sea of Thieves. State of Decay 2, which was supposed to be a $60 game, it was just State of Decay 1.5. Like, what is he... Is, is it... When are we going to get to the point to where we are celebrate? Okay, Nethos, you're in a marathon. You're running, right? I bring my slow ass along the way because you stumble and I pick you up. Okay, great. Thank you for picking me up, but... I'm not, you know, I'm not great at training you to run, right? Like, so what, are you going to celebrate? Are you going to stop running and stop and get rid of your focus and say, ooh, you picked me up because I stumbled? No, you're going to say, okay, thank you for picking me up, but we got to be focused down there or you focus down there with me. And that's what I'm, I'm basically trying to say that this whole facade that feels saved Xbox is why everybody has lost their focus. They took their eye off the prize. And it's all about the great content that Xbox used to provide. W- w- would you agree with that, Neethals? Oh, he had to step away for a second. While he stepped away, let me answer Cold Blood Sensei's question. He says, sorry to interrupt your Phil Spencer's still fraud talk. I just wanted to know what you think about Last of Us 2 and Ghost of Tsushima. Um, Last of Us 2, next to Cyberpunk 2077, is my most anticipated game of 2020 right now. Um, And that's with me saying that I didn't even care for the first one. But what I saw at E3 impressed me that much to where I'm very interested in this. You know what I'm saying? 
Um, third would be, of course, Halo Infinite. You know, we, we got to see what what's going on. I'm not that interested in Ghost of Tsushima. Those are just my thoughts. It just, it, it just doesn't appeal to me. And again, I'm not a, I, I, it doesn't appeal to me at all, you know. Um, but I am, in, but Last of Us 2 next to Cyberpunk is my second highly anticipated um, game. And because of that, I'm buying a PlayStation 5. Right now, I don't have it slotted to even get an Xbox. I don't. I'm going to buy a PlayStation 5 and um, I'm going to uh, uh, wait for that game and see what else they got in store. I mean, even though I haven't been the biggest fan of their output, they're talking my language. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, Sony's talking my language. When you take again, Grounded. When you when you produce a game like Grounded, which is from a company that has a twenty year lineage of making games that are adult themed and hardcore, and you come out with this shit, like again, your eye is off the prize. You're not focusing on what you're supposed to be focusing on as Xbox and. I would say do me, and this is my issue with Phil. This is why I say he's not good. It's not, this is a rebranding, guys. This is a rebranding of Xbox, but he doesn't want to admit it because he understands that the last stragglers of Xbox think they've been fooled and they think that the Xbox of old is coming back. You know, big ups to dirt. He tells me all the time, MM2K, you're going to be sorry. You're going to be sorry. You know what I'm saying? Xbox doesn't want to buy these studios if they weren't going to come out with compelling stuff like how they used to. And I say to dirt, that's where Phil has, is a, is, is a genius. Even though he, he, even geniuses have stumbles, you know, and what he did with control was a stumble, but that's where Phil um, is a genius. He's a sly little genius where he, um, he know he understands psychology to, you don't get that far as, as a head of a department or head of a business, unless you understand psychology, trust me, I know because they're training us on psychology all the fucking time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's the biggest pull. You got to convince people to do shit that if they were in their right mind, they wouldn't fucking do for the little bit of pay that they get. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So they're trained. We're going, we're going over test modules and training on psychology all the time. There's no better psychologist besides an actual psychologist than second, a businessman, particularly a VP, you know? So with that being said, when, when I, when, when dirt says that to me, I always respond. That's what he wants you to believe because this is definitely a rebranding of the, of the, of the system. This is not for the hardcore anymore. There might be spatters of hardcore content here and there, but they don't plan on whipping out hardcore content anymore. And I, I just want people to understand that when you do shit like what they did with Obsidian, when you do shit with how they talk about bullets and guns don't make games and all this other stuff, that this is a rebranding, nothing more, nothing less. But my problem with Phil is that he's not being transparent about that because he doesn't want to lose that consumer base. Instead of being honest, he's going to make y'all think what Dirt believes and then in the 2023, when you realize it ain't really coming, then you're going to be like, oh, shit, well, okay. And then you're going to be stuck like Juck. You know what I mean? But uh, no, Nethos, what what was I asking you, Nethos? I was asking you, do you think that the problem is, is that gamers lost their focus? Do you think gamers lost their focus on Xbox creating good content and they're just focusing on Phil, quote unquote, saving them? What do you think it is why everybody's still praising Phil? What do you think it is? Look. When Donnie D was leading the helm for like the first year of Xbox, if even that, uh, it, it, everything was fucked up, right? You had the connect in the box. You had you're still recovering from the DRM fiasco. Yeah. His really bad comment came out, mm -hmm. and then when Phil came in, you know, he saw he take out the connect from the box. He's talked like, "I care about the hardcore gamers. I want to win this generation." He says like really vague stuff like that. I think they got the idea like, oh, Phil's a hardcore guy. He's going to bring Xbox back to greatness. He's been there since the beginning. But they don't realize, like I said earlier, all the stuff he did was already planned to happen regardless yeah. if it was him there or not. Yep. 
Like taking the connector out of the box was coming regardless. The DRM was gone. Um, every company's like, we care about gamers and all that, right? Like mm-hmm. that, that's not anything special. Yeah, I think we have to look at what's one hundred percent a Phil Spencer move. We're talking one hundred percent a game that he greenlighted. He got rid of Fable and a potential, you know, actual RPG because he tried forcing in the Windows Ten shit, mm-hmm. and he greenlighted Sea of Thieves. <laughs> he he green light he got rid of the phantom dust remake that yeah. was gonna be a full-fledged game they didn't even yeah. need much more of a budget yeah and he gave you phantom dust with the original assets yep he they got voodoo vince back right yeah yeah um well, what, what's else green lighted oh he green lighted that Santa k2 come out broken like mm-hmm. let's be real they could have given them a bigger budget they're gonna yep. give them more time yep but they chose not to yep we have to look at things he's done. Yeah. He let the MCC come out broken. Yep. He could have delayed that shit. He knew it was broken. Yep. I mean... I mean, I mean let, let's be honest. Is he really for the hardcore gamer? Yeah, exactly. There to get results. Exactly. These kitty cheap games get results, sadly, because they're so cheap to make. Yeah. Uh, he green-lighted to get super lucky tails, and on top of that... He made sure the Nintendo Switch got the better version of this damn game. <laughs> he didn't even let the, he didn't even have them release an update for the fucking game or anything. Oh, like, let, let, let's be honest. Like, what has he done? I want to believe, dear. I want to believe Xbox is coming back to greatness. I think they will do better next generation because there's nowhere to go but up. Hmm. But from what he's done, from the experience under Phil Spencer and uh, his, I guess, repertoire, mm-hmm. uh, th- th- there's nothing to prove otherwise. I'm I'm sorry. Like, there's nothing he's done that proves to me like, oh yeah, things are gonna get good. I mean, I believe Bleeding Edge is a coincidence that it kind of looks like that. I mean, that game yeah. has been in development. Yeah. I can't get mad about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Grounded, I'm a little unsure. Y- you do kind of have a point. Exactly. Yeah. Like, come on now. And again, y'all gotta read between the lines. Phil, Phil's a wordsmith, and I'm I don't know what his goal was with spilling the beans on control early. I don't know if he's trying to force them twist their arm to say, oops, I already said something, so now y'all might as well drop that shit now. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what but Phil is far from a uh, dummy. You know what, Moss? Mm-hmm. I think you're absolutely right. Look yeah. at how bad control is damaged controlling. Exactly. <laughs> See what I did there? Yeah. Uh, like <laughs> They're, they're going to have to just speed that process up. Mm-hmm. And it can't just back out of the deal. Exactly. The contracts are done. Exactly. I mean, there might be a clause or something like that, but I doubt that they're going to back out of it. You know what I'm saying? And I'll say this. This is one great thing under Phil Spencer. Obviously, he didn't give us the X, like D-Batch things. Um, Mm -hmm. Game Pass is good, right? It's not going to reach the casual crowd. Like, we can can agree to that. But as, you know, as a consumer, if, you know, you're a hardcore Xbox fan or whatever, there are some good games in there. Let's be honest. There but, are some but, good games. But with there. that said, Nethos, as great as Game Pass is, and even though I'm not the biggest fan of all of the content, I get it. Game Pass is the greatest deal in gaming today. But let's just say if I love Game Pass, and I said, oh, this is and every time I was away from Game Pass, I was two seconds away from dying. Game Pass isn't Phil's baby. Game Pass is Sachi and Nadella's idea before Phil was even ever promoted games as a service. Anything as a service was Sachi and Nadella's brewing this, 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 this office 365 and all this. This is all Sachi and Nadella's vision, right? So it was Phil is just doing the legwork, making the film. Y'all, if for those of y'all that are happy that Minecraft is under Phil, it didn't, that wasn't even, Phil told you in that Fortune Magazine interview that it was Satya Nadella that either made the, he couldn't even remember. This is how, this is how separated he was from it until it was time to sign the deal. That Satya Nadella either called him directly or sent somebody to call him from um, the developers of Minecraft so they could ink the deal. This wasn't Phil. You know what I'm saying? So, again, to Nethel's point, we have to pay attention to what we give credit to Phil for. What has Phil yeah. done? Go ahead. I'm sorry, Nethel. Go ahead. No, you're good. Like, I didn't even realize that whole Game Pass situation. I'll give him credit, though. Like, he helped get good games into the service, though. Mm-hmm. 
I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm getting the Yakuza games and stuff like that. And my friend or Pedro, that's a great game in there right now. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a lot of good shit in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I mean, but uh, you, you, but yeah, let's let's be honest. Like, what has he done? One hundred percent. That's been great. I feel like the things he's done 100 percent have been not great. Like I see a thieves yeah. and all that. He told you in that Eurogamer interview, my first direction to the team was in talking to Sea of Thieves. That's uh, actually that was his baby. Think about this, Moz. I, I don't know if it was last year, E3, or this year, but one of these years he said, like, this is 100% my work, the stuff I, well, that's been coming under work under my yes. leadership. Yes. And notice how bad E3 has become. <laughs> like, <laughs> notice how bad it's become. Like, stop, man. We got to... Again, keep our eye on the prize. I think we're tra- traumatized by what happened in tw- 2013 because I included. I just knew. I was arrogant about it like Microsoft probably was. I knew that the Xbox One was going to kick the PlayStation 4's ass. I, kn- I just knew it. I just knew it. When I got to play them, I was like, okay, this PS4 might be a little bit more powerful, but Xbox is now the household name. You don't notice the power all like that. I see it a little bit in Call of Duty Ghost. I was all at the time. I just knew that Xbox, and then it, when it didn't happen, I think it was a shock to all of our systems. That being said, get over it. <laughs> that was that was six years ago. What has Phil done that has been stellar for the Xbox brass? Fuck Donnie D. Let's take Donnie D out of the equation. Donnie D was only in charge for two years. You're trying to tell me that you're stuck off of what a motherfucker did for two years. Meanwhile, this guy that's been in charge for four has done less for the brand as far as giving you content than any other person in charge ever. And they've made, they've made more money under this guy than they did under any of those other people. But you got more with them. Your theoretical belief is, and Phil Spencer makes no sense. Y'all cannot digest and eat and take in everything this guy tells you. It doesn't make any sense. I'm sorry. Oh, you're good. I mean, a great rant. But, like, do you know what's crazy? Mm-hmm. Remember, the, I think it was 2015, they had the greatest lineup or whatever for the holiday season. Yeah. Like you had Tomb Raider and all that come out. Like, it was hit after hit after hit. That, yep. It was awesome, right? Yep. Granted, it was all Donnie D's work. Like, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Phil Spencer did inside the Tomb Raider deal. Yep. But, um, when that failed and Sony still won the holiday, yeah, I think that encouraged Phil to do this even more. Yeah, yep. I think that encouraged him to go even lower budget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I I, I don't think the future of Xbox is big AAA content. Matt B even said it. You can mm-hmm. have fun with double A. Mm-hmm. Yep. I agree. I agree. I agree. That's just you know. I, and, and these people are sincere. They they believe it in their true hearts of hearts. And I, and like my grandmama, like like Trey Payne says, my grandmama used to tell me, my grandmama used to tell me, <laughs> bless their hearts, bless their hearts. They really they in their soul and being, they truly believe that. But no, yeah, maybe it's devoid of the Fortune 500 experience. Sachi and Adele is in charge, and Anne Fogelty, I believe the name is. That's a name that's being brought up all the time out of Phil's mouth, right? I think she's um, Satya's assistant as far as crunching numbers and stuff like that. And for those of you that don't know, whenever you have heads of departments or CEOs, it's not just the one guy running around that makes that, that makes the, the magic work. It's the one-two punch of the leader and their assistant. And sometimes the assistant is even more fluid in the shit than the actual leader themselves. So Anne, um, that works hand-in-hand with Satya, that's the person that you meet with the most is the assistant, right? And so when when Phil goes and he sits with Ann, he's probably nervous, palm sweaty. And when she goes over the numbers and she likes what she sees, that makes him feel good. In the Fortune 500 world, your job is to appease them. So he's getting that money. He's bringing home that bank. That's good for Microsoft. It's not great for the, the legacy xbox person because you're not going to get the hardcore content that you were used to under no circumstances nothing that he's put out the structure of a fortune 500 company that i just described there's nothing in the dirt that tells you that 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 leads to what y'all believe y'all think because he bought a whole bunch of studios who said that them studios is going to pump out hardcore shit look at what he did to obsidian 
The first game under Microsoft Studios is Honey, We Shrunk the Roaches. Just because he got hardcore studios don't mean you're getting hardcore content. So please stop. Any last words, Lethals, before we move on to our last subject? Man, I hope the best that we'll get quality games, but at the end of the day, I don't I don't really see the proof. Yeah. Uh, there's nothing to go off of. Like, stop. Again, to your point, we might get some good, fun experiences, you know, that we could play. But if you're looking for that AAA hardcore content that's spearheaded, like how Bioshock was spearheaded, Ken Levine told you, if it wasn't for Microsoft, we'd have never seen Bioshock. How Mass Effect was spearheaded, that, remember, that was their game. Shit like that, that level, you're not going to see it on a consistent basis like you have in the past anymore. Period. Um, until they get, yeah. Like, I mean, what are they going to combat Sony with? Like and more out of world s games. Yeah, like, exactly. No, I believe Obsidian could do great work with you know, as low budget as they get. But like, yeah. out of world just isn't a triple A game. Yep, it not. isn't. I it's love not. it, but it's not. It's not. In 2019 was a was a down year. You put out yeah, of world in Sony's 2018. Yeah, down year. Yeah. Xbox is only now competing. <laughs> and that's with their big triple A years. <laughs> hey, look, you put out of worlds in 2018. I don't know, Pippin. I, that, that's what I'm thinking. I'm I, like, don't I don't know. Really the table much. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, look, and being that we spoke of Fallout, hey, look, 2019 is so bad. Fallout 76 is back in Xbox Top 50. It's only 13 spots behind Gear uh, and behind Outer Worlds, and, and and 11 spots behind Gear. <laughs> so stop it. Uh, with that being said, all right, we're gonna go to the last subject matter. Uh, snuffed hardcore games. Now, this is what I mean by this because I know we, you, Nethos behind the scenes was like, "What the hell is you talking about?" Um, but. Okay, so again, we we highlight hardcore content here, but we've had a thing that even though 2019 overall, as far as like AAA boom boom content, hasn't really been there. There's been some great games, um, particularly Metro Nethals. Metro's a great game that I don't think is getting its fair due. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, I like Rage. I think Rage Two is a great game. Um, you know, that's not getting his fair due. And even Devil May Cry, even though it's getting a lot of acclaim, Devil May Cry got snuffed, you know, possibly is, is, is for in a lot of uh, games of the year consideration. And all these are hardcore games. Now, Sekiro's a hardcore, hardcore game, right? Um, it's, you know, it, 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 it's in its own niche genre, but it's a hardcore. But why do you think, I mean, we got Death Stranding, we got Outer World. Why do you think the more softer games kind of are, are are getting the light? And games like Metro, you know what I'm saying, and Devil May Cry even aren't did, didn't get their their just fear. Is it just me, or you think there's something in the sauce? Uh, I, I you know what? I, I really don't know. Like, I'll be honest. I don't know why it's up there. Like, I, I haven't played it, but there's no way like that shit's better than like Devil May Cry. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it didn't even score any, anywhere near it. <laughs> like, I, I don't know if they have a thing where they just don't want um, what's my god? They don't want like publishers to have two games on the nomination for game of the year. Maybe I that's it. Yeah, maybe they had to pick Resident Evil two or Devil May Cry, and that's what it came down to. But uh, I mean, th- there's some things that are weird about that list. For example, Devil May Cry isn't there. That's a big one. Yep. But what also isn't there is uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses. Yeah, yeah, that's the highest scoring exclusive. Yeah, this year, and that's not even there. Yeah, that's 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 kind of weird. That's a man. hardcore game. I mean, a lot of people wouldn't like that game. It's a strategy game, but that should be there. Yeah, that's that's a weird one. Yeah, I forgot all about that one. Yeah, yeah, bro. It, like it's over ninety on Metacritic. Jeez, jeez. I mean, that's there. Astral Chain. I Baron loves that game. That could potentially be there, but I mean, whatever. I don't know. I, I just I just feel like they try to. If you have a microtransactions, they just kind of almost boot you out immediately. Um, yeah. They don't want publishers to have two entries, and yeah, I, I guess I guess the game of the year. Now that I think about it, it's always just games that are just popular. Exactly. That yeah, particular yeah. year. That's that's popular within the the, the gaming elitist. You know the reviewers yeah. and shit like that. You know, it's not about. That's why I say I don't like. I, look, I, I was saying this in my uh, Jedi Fallen Order stream. I don't think Jeff Keighley's talented. I, he has no talent whatsoever. I think he's good. He's he's a hard worker. He has great work ethic, and he has put. He knows how to get people together because of that work ethic. But that's not a talent. 
Like having great work ethic is just all about your drive. Anybody can have great work ethic, but I don't. When he was on G4 TV, he was he was the least cared about one. I so his game award show. I don't he think was on G4 TV. I didn't oh even yeah, know yeah, that. exactly. Exactly. I, I My love point G4 exactly. TV. I didn't remember him at all. He was the dopey eyed person that would come and talk about a game here and there. But like, oh, okay. I, I remember Jessica Chobot or whatever. Yeah, 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 yep. Yeah. Jessica Chobot. My man Kevin Pereira. But you know, it was Kevin Pereira. Um. Um, G4 uh, TV was amazing. Oh, I loved it. I loved it. That was my, oh man. I, look, I got story. Hey, I ain't going to get into it here. It's not going to be appropriate here. I got, I, I got, I got some stories about it. I had a bachelor pad back in those days and I used Guitar Hero as, as a lore for <laughs> G4. And they'd be like, you're such a nerd. I would have never, oh, like, yeah, you're coming play Guitar Hero with me. But, uh, but uh, that's a whole nother story. Okay, we ain't going to get into that. With that being said, Here's the thing with um, uh, um, with with Jeff Keighley, man. He, I think, games like Devil May Cry and either even Fire Emblem that are way better Japanese developed games aren't up there because that would definitely throw contention of Death Stranding for it. I think having Sek- if he would have not had Sekiro up there, then I think that really would have like people would have been like, "Oh, you're a fraud." So he threw Sekiro up there. But I'm under the mind state that there's a remote possibility that Sekiro's going to win. But I think this is all set up for Death Stranding to be put on this ultra pedestal. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I get it. He doesn't have to physically pick Death Stranding because he has a board. But y'all got to remember, he selected the fucking board. He selected people that are like-minded like him. So he don't have to get his hands dirty. It's like a mob boss. You know what I'm saying? You ain't going to have people in the, in the family that try to go on a different route than you, than you are. So he ain't got to, he, he, everybody that's there understands that the, the Game Awards is the Kojima praising network. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like a cult of his church. Why is Kojima on his board? Thank you. Like, why? Stop. Stop. So now we talked a little bit about why we think what what games we think they didn't put up there, like you know games that were rich in microtransactions. And I I alluded to he couldn't put too many good games up there because he I think he's testing the waters. I think he really wants to try to find a way. That's why this motherfucker's on Twitter. What do you really think? What do you? He's trying to gauge the public to see how far he can get away with giving Death Stranding a clean sweep. You know what I'm saying? You ain't never seen this motherfucker tweet this much about the Game Awards. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to see how far he can get away and what the impact would be if Death Stranding gets this clean sweep, right? But I he he but at the end of the day, I think that he knows that he's gonna test this water to see how far he can get away with this, but putting those other games up there definitely will overshadow Death Stranding. That said. Do we think that there's a, another reason why control could be up there? And I'm going to give you my opinion. You tell me what you think, Nethos. I think control is up there because um, he's looking to give some credit to them having to deal with the small budget that they had to and they're trying to throw some some snack cakes at them. You know what I mean? What do you think about that, Nethos? Oh, Nethos had to step away. All right, while we're waiting for Nethos to come back, Cold Blood Sensei says, what is your opinion on the director of Halo Infinite leaving just a year before launch? Well, the director, here's what I've discovered. I'm in a beta for the game that he left to go work on. Um, I don't think it says much about Halo than it does about Microsoft. The game is called Scrav- Scavengers. I'm actually in the play test for that. It's under NDA. I'm not allowed to talk about it beyond that. What I will say is that... Um, I don't think it means anything for Halo. What happened was, is those people were poached. Um, and I see that happen a lot in, 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 in um, white collar jobs where somebody goes to a company and they're like, Oh, you're a talent. Do you know anybody else that might want to come here? We're going to, we'll pay them more money. And they go talk to their friends at that company. They just left and they get poached. So they're poached. So the people that are making scavengers, they've poached three people from the Halo team. That's basically what it is. All three of them, that were of higher positions left Halo to go make this game scavengers. And I'm not going to talk about the game, but that's what happened. I don't think Halo's yeah. in trouble. 
Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I mean, oh no, you're good. I mean, I think that's a good point about Halo. I mean, we have to think about this. If and uh, what's it? Sony Santa Monica. If they had a bunch of talent poached, that might be a worrisome. But let's be real. Three, four, three. They need a complete shakeup over there. Like they've yeah, had yeah. two almost duds in a row. Yeah. They they, they got to figure out new leadership or whatever. So those people leaving. It might just be for the best, honestly. Like, I don't know if those people were necessarily, like, great talent over there that made Halo 4, Halo 5 great. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. Maybe, maybe they have to rethink things. But um, uh, what, let's see. What were we talking about? We were talking about the game of the year. Game of the year, yep. Yeah. Like, uh, here, here's the thing. And Jeff Keighley helped incite this. If Death Stranding were to win, even on its own merits, if, like, the people really did pick Death Stranding to win, he just looks bad. Yeah. I don't. There's no way to spin it. We can damage control. Like, well, he didn't pick it. Like, no, he just looks bad because he's in the game. There's multiple times where he was standing for Kojima publicly. He has dinner with the guy all the time. Like, mm-hmm. and posts about it on Twitter. Like, it just looks bad. Yeah. Not, like, even the voice, a voice actor in Gears Five, um, also joined in on the conversation. Like, he showed the what's it, the game of the year list, right? Yeah. Yep. And then he just showed a gif of Jeff Keighley in the in Death Stranding. <laughs> like, like, there's people in the industry that know that shit's fucked up. I mean, I think, it, I don't know if it was a Kotaku article that came out that was, like, questioning why Death Stranding's up there, too. Like, the game, it's a bigger deal than people think it is. Like, he just, he's gonna just look bad. That's why I think, even if they want to give Death Stranding the win, they're not gonna give it the win. They're gonna just, like, let it be the Red Dead 2 this year mm-hmm. and let it sweep every other category. Yeah, yeah, you know how Red Dead Two didn't actually win Game of the Year. It exactly, just everything they just let, else. They just lead a sleep, sweep everything else. Yeah. I think that's what they're gonna do with Death Stranding. I think mm-hmm. cause it's some things it deserves, like best OST, like the best music, maybe mm-hmm. voice acting, and even acting in general. Maybe yeah. it can win all that stuff. I, I don't think it's the best graphics this year. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like I, I, I think Death so. Stranding's I, what graphics. Do you, what do you think? Really who do you think graphics is better? I think the graphics are amazing, though. But who do you think is better? Uh, honestly, I think Gears Five looks better. Like, I just okay. I don't think like game like when you're in the game, Death Stranding doesn't look like uh, fucking mind blowing to me. Oh. I just think the cutscenes look really good. Oh, okay, okay. A little bit. Like, I played... I, it's, it's all muddy and shit. Like, I don't know. Well, granted, I'm playing on a low response monitor, 1440p. Even though all it does is go to 1080, um, it does, you know having that lower response time does like help. Infidelities. So that's what I'm playing it on. Um, yeah, but I don't know, man. I think like Gears Five honestly looks better. I think Gears Five looks better. You know what? To be honest with you, and I to be I, fair, I mean, I, I played Metro on PC, but like Metro looks crazy too. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt that either. Like, but see, here's my thing. I've have yet to play Gears Five on console, so I've played it on PC. Definitely, Gears Five looks better to me on PC, but I've never played it on console to compare. So maybe I need to do. I, I definitely probably need to do that. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, and, and interesting, very interesting. So yeah, but like you said, Jeff Keighley did this himself. I'm in a belief system to where I, I think I believe what Nethel's saying is is like possible. I just think it's a lower probability. I think he really wants to though. I think he really wants to give Death Stranding the, the clean sweep, you know. Um, and he's gauging. That's why he's gauging the public right now via Twitter to see how bad he can get away with it. You know what I mean? Now he may in, in, in all of his results and all this other stuff, he might realize, Hey, I can't get away with it. And then like Nethel said, it's going to sweep everywhere else. And then they're going to give it to Sekiro. But, yeah. But like in all fairness, he also incited these suspicions, not only because he was publicly standing for the dude or whatever, mm-hmm. but like he kept responding to even small Xbox YouTubers. that are making these claims. Exactly. Yeah. You responding to him, introduce them to the audience that made it more widespread. Yeah. Yep. And, and why is he responding to these people? You don't respond to like these small flies. Exactly. Like, or just all flies. You don't punch down. Right. Like I was saying before, you don't punch down. If you're a big guy, you don't punch down. And that's what, that's what I had no, said. No, he, f- there's something wrong there. Yeah, exactly. And that's why I said, I think he's, he's desperate because he's trying to poach the public to see if he can get away with giving it a clean sweep. That, that, he ain't do this last year. If you are so confident, if you got a board that does this and that's the board, doing this and the board's not talking and you're going out here. I have nothing to do with this. Like you said, why are you talking? You know what I mean? So yeah, uh, like I don't know if they should change the rules over there. 
like someone brought up, you know, Rockstar is a part of the board, and they were a part of the board last year. Yeah, Maybe yeah. you should make it that if a developer is going for game of the year, at least, they should not be a part of the board. Exa- yeah, exactly. I mean, I can understand the other wars. That's not a big deal. But game of the year, yeah. Kojima shouldn't be anywhere near it, and Rockstar, if they were competing against, shouldn't be on it either. Yep. Absolutely. Granted, I think Kojima and Rockstar are a little different because Kojima's not even a team of 100 people, but that's my opinion. Yeah, yep. Yeah, we're we're talking about Rockstar. Yeah, like you said, opposed to Kojima. That's essentially a publisher by itself. It's not the publisher; it's a studio. But my God, that play, that's fucking huge. <laughs> yep. Well, with that said, um, great show, guys. I would love. Thank you so much, Cold Blood Sensei. Hey, bro, you did you you did the Lord's work today. Thank you for hitting up the free messaging app. Thank you for showing some support. We got viewers in here. Like, even even if y'all would have just said hi, it helps out the channel a lot. And a lot of these auxiliary services that I'm trying to provide, you know, if you could provide a little bit of support to help us keep it going, I'd appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be needed to, to keep it going. Again, we ain't trying to live off of it. Me and, me and Nethels ain't trying to go to the Sizzler, you know, and get some steaks off it. <laughs> but, you know, as far the longevity of this stuff really depends upon you guys' support. Um, and with that said, I want to thank cold blood since that's why we answered him in the chat. He's showing some love. Um, hopefully maybe next time we'll get to, um, some phone calls, you know, more when also in the chat, as you can see on the screen, homie, um, uh, uh, Mr. Righteous fish on YouTube. He says, Metro is all right. I like first two better. 84 is not a dud, but halo. Do you think it is? Um, Oh, that's Devin in a box. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, thank you for more, um, more when, um, giving the bits to 400 bits the last time he was here and big ups to big biggie two, three, 16 that, that donated to $5, you know, stuff like that, that keeps the phone lines open and, 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 and keeps it rolling. So I want to thank those three people, cold blood sensei, more when and biggie for, for helping out the channel. We got to keep it rolling guys. Uh, with that being said, I want to thank everybody for joining he said, Loot's bugging sometimes. I, and, and I appreciate you. Um, no, I didn't get your loot, uh, 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 Devin. I didn't get your loot. Um, just Cold Blood since things came through. But I appreciate you, Cold Blood, for, for dealing with it. With that said, I got a very important meeting to get to. Um, I want to thank everybody for coming through, for making the show hot. You know what I mean? So big ups to Nethel's giving us his expertise. Now I'm going to let him finish his, uh, uh, um, finish his, his love fest with, with Halo Reach. The next Grand Parks is next Wednesday. I know we haven't been consistent, but we're going to be changing that. And we got a big announcement coming on Monday. And it, hint, it includes a big giveaway. That's all I'm going to say. So you definitely, it includes a big giveaway and a discord. And that's all I'm going to say. But with that said, <laughs> thank everybody. Cold Blood Sensei, Devin got the box. Uh, the homie, Mr. Righteous Fish, as a.k.a. Morrowind, in the chat. Um, who else we got up in here? We got others watching. And, you know, and I get it. it you know, sometimes it can be a little intimidating. But um, any support helps. We appreciate it. Whole C22, thank you for coming through. With that being said, I want to thank everybody for watching. Thank everybody for coming through. We, uh, um, before we go, Nethos, what you going to be getting into, brother? Oh, uh, you know, I got to run to the grocery store real quick, but I will be getting back into Halo Reach. And uh, Moss, did I'm you join have you. Ocean Premiere on PC? Do I have? Uh, yeah, I got it now. I got it now. Okay. Yep. You need to download Star Wars Battlefront 2. And yeah. We need to play that co-op. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to definitely do that because I got it to get, uh, what's that damn game called? Um, Jedi Fallen Star Wars. Yeah, yeah, Star Wars. Yep. No, we'll definitely do that. Maybe we'll stream a little yeah, bit. Yeah, we'll try to do a Halo Reach legendary run. <laughs> <Cold blood. laughs> that one's going to be fun. Oh, yeah. Cold Blood Sensei said, I want to see Tsunami in a wheelchair. <laughs> hey, yo, you got to take that up with Bunny. Hey, so with Tsunami and Devin. See, Devin's smart. Devin will throw his little jabs. He do like Mayweather. He'll step back. Tsunami's all in. He start windmilling. Oh, no, no, no. And, and Bunny clocks the shit out of him every time. So, yes, tune in to Scram Punks, 930 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I think we're going to be moving to 9 on Wednesdays uh, to see... Tsunami get put in a wheelchair like Cold Blood since they said. <laughs> With that said, thank you everybody for coming through. Um, thank you for making the program what it is. And as always, y'all have a wonderful, wonderful gaming.
day. Peace.